So have you ever wondered that how do we get energy from whatever we eat? Or you might have seen one advertisement of Glucon D or other energy drinks in which the tired person or tired child drinks this Glucon D and instantly gets the energy. So how this happens? So let us discuss the process behind the energy or ATP production. There are two important processes by which cells or organisms produce ATPs. One is respiration or more specifically cellular respiration and other is fermentation. Let us first discuss the process of respiration. In school time, we have studied, we have learned that intake of oxygen and release of CO2 is called as respiration. But this is half truth. Now let us discuss the full story of respiration. We keep breathing till the end of our life. While breathing, we inhale the oxygen which is transferred to the lungs. From lungs, it enters to the blood. And from blood, it is carried to each and every cell with the help of hemoglobin which is present inside the RBC. Oxygen inhaled by us finally enters the cell. Inside the cell, it is transported to the mitochondria. Simultaneously, the glucose molecules from that energy drink or glucon D or food material also enters the blood. It is also transported to the cell. Now we have two components inside the cell. Glucose from the food material and oxygen from the air. And now the process of cellular respiration begins. Once the glucose molecule enters the cytoplasm of the cell, here we are considering only one molecule of glucose, so that one molecule of glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate. And this conversion is carried out in 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions, which are collectively known as glycolysis. So in the first phase of respiration, one molecule of glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate by the process called as glycolysis. After this, these two molecules of pyruvate enters the mitochondrial matrix, that is the innermost compartment of mitochondria. Here, they are further converted to two molecules of acetyl-CoA. And finally, this two molecule of acetyl-CoA, they join the pathway which is called as PCA or it is also known as citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle and here it is further get oxidized. So in these three phases that is glucose to pyruvate, pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and then TCA glucose is getting oxidized and for carrying out this oxidation some molecules which are known as coenzymes play a very important role. In the first phase that is in glycolysis two NAD plus molecule helps in the oxidation and they becomes NADH2. So during glycolysis we get two molecules of NADH2. During the same phase we also get two molecules of ATP. In the second phase we again get two NADH2 molecules from two NAD plus. And during TCA we get total six NADH2 molecules from six NAD plus molecules. In TCA, another coenzyme molecule helps in the oxidation and it is FAD+. Such two FAD+, are converted into two FADH2 molecules and along with this, two ATP molecules are produced. So let us calculate the total molecules generated during these three phases. So we have total four ATPs, means two generated during glycolysis and two during TCA. We have total 10 NADH2 molecules. We have generated 2 from glycolysis, 2 during conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and 6 during TCA, means total 10 NADH2 and 2 FADH2 during TCA. So we have total 4 ATPs, 10 NADH2 molecules and 2 FADH2 molecules generated during the oxidation of glucose. The FADH2 and NADH2 molecules are again oxidized back to their original form that is to NAD plus and FAD plus to produce more energy and this process occurs in mitochondria. As we have already discussed 
the oxygen is transferred in the mitochondria so oxygen is present somewhere here near the inner membrane of mitochondria let me first tell you the parts of mitochondria so this is the outer membrane of mitochondria this is inner membrane the space between inner and outer membrane is called as intermembrane space and the inner side is called as mitochondrial matrix let us magnify the mitochondria so this is again outer membrane this is inner one this is mitochondrial matrix and this is intermembrane space in the inner membrane of mitochondria electron carriers are present in a specific order the first electron carrier takes the electron from nadh2 and convert it into nad plus and then it transfers the electrons to the next electron carrier the next electron carrier has more electron affinity than the previous carrier and therefore it pulls the electrons this process goes on and electrons from nadh2 are transferred from one electron carrier to the other finally all the electrons are transferred to the oxygen and by accepting the electrons oxygen becomes water molecule which is also known as metabolic water since the electrons are transferred from one electron carrier to the other this chain of electron carrier is called as electron transport chain that is etc while electrons are transferred to the oxygen protons from matrix are pumped to the intermembrane space and due to this concentration of h plus that is proton in the intermembrane space increases and in the matrix decreases this generates the positive charge in intermembrane space and negative charge in mitochondrial matrix the separation of charges generates a force called as proton motive force after this the protons are transferred back to the mitochondrial matrix through a molecular motor called as fof1 atpase when proton passes through this motor it catalyzes a reaction in which atp molecules are generated from adp plus pi so if one nadh2 is oxidized in this process this complete process 2.5 atps are generated and if one fadh2 is oxidized it generates 1.5 atp so in this way atps are generated from nadh2 and fadh2 so in total we have 10 nadh2 molecules and from one nadh2 molecule we get 2.5 atps and therefore from 10 nadh2 molecules we will get 10 into 2.5 is equal to 25 atps we have total 2 fadh2s so from 1 fadh2 we get 1.5 atps so from 2 fadh2 molecule we will get 2 into 1.5 is equal to 3 atps so let us calculate the total atps form so we have total 25 plus 3 and plus 4 is equal to 32 atps so in this way we will get 32 atp molecules from complete oxidation of glucose so we ate food containing glucose one glucose molecule is converted into two pyruvate then they are converted into two acetyl coa then acetyl coa molecules are oxidized in tca during first phase we get two atps and two nadh2s in the second we get two nadh2 during tca we get six nadh2s two fadh2s and two atps finally all the nadh2s and fadh2s generated during this process are again oxidized in electron transport chain generating 28 atps this 28 plus this 4 means total 32 atps at some stages of these reactions co2 molecules are released at this point and at this point this co2 molecule travel back to the air 
so remember one thing this co2 that is release when we say respiration intake of oxygen and release of co2 this co2 are not from air they are generated during oxidation so in this way the process of respiration is completed so intake of oxygen and release of co2 now recall what was the role of oxygen in respiration it was present at the end of electron transport chain means it was the last electron acceptor and that's why it is called as the terminal electron acceptor so oxygen acts as terminal electron acceptor depending upon the type of electron acceptor respiration can be categorized as aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration if the terminal electron acceptor is oxygen the respiration is aerobic but if it is other than oxygen like sulfates nitrates or sulfur then in this case the respiration is called as anaerobic respiration multicellular and most of the unicellular eukaryotes carry out the aerobic respiration but some bacteria carry out anaerobic respiration such bacteria are called as anaerobes so this was all about the respiration in the second part of this video we will discuss the fermentation process